What's up out there? We are back with Melver Idol Hardcore, and this is episode 37. Uh, if you notice by the title of this, I had a, a big flash of brilliance the other day, I guess. You want to call it that, and I realized something about this game. Um, we'll get into that in one second. First and foremost, I'm going to roll through this real quick. Uh, I needed some more marks for the wood cutting, but you, you know, you get, it's beneficial to create the tablets for it and then go do the, the skill so that you gain XP on the, um, on the summoning side of things while you're doing that. So this is my hardcore account, so I don't really have much inventory space. So I don't really have any logs or didn't have any logs left over. So long story short, I set this thing to go um, fishing or fishing, wood cutting and get some, get some trees built up. And then I was going to build the int um, tablets and go back in and chop. And, you know, the thing was, I don't know. I don't know why, but those marks came along very quickly and it didn't take, I don't remember how long it took, but I didn't get any progress towards my summoning XP on it, but these things popped in real fast and I'm done with it. So, uh, I think I worked towards the occultist a little bit. I don't remember which ones of these I had before, but I've been doing some strength. The cooking one's done. I think I had that done the other day. Been working on uh, rune crafting. I need one more. Uh, this is done. I have not started this yet and looks like we're done with the, well, of course, I think we were done with that the other day. I still don't have one for um, herb lore. This one's been brutal trying to get. I've ran through uh, a round of uh, damage reduction and I went through all of the uh, diamonds I had at the time. Now I've got some little bit built back up, but um, these are hard to come by and I've been doing that on my standard account and they're still hard to come by even over there. On that account, I have a lot of, um, oh, I have a lot of pieces parts, so I have some extra garum and some bones, so I think I'm doing that, but I ran through several of these uh, on that side just because I have all the components just sitting there, and I'm still not getting it done, so Herblore must be a really low drop rate. I kind of wonder if the drop rate of some of these is a little slower, um, although this one seems really slow too, so and it's an earlier one, so I don't know. I'm, I'm a little, I don't know don't know how I feel about that and I haven't really looked at it yet so I'm not entirely sure okay uh, the other thing I will point out is that my magic's at 90 I did get that done I might have got my ranged up a level but then I had my epiphany and I was like all right I got something else to do so I think I sat last night and let this do rune crafting overnight because I was trying to get this one completed basically I'd like to get all the marks done as I do things um so we've got some magic some some more combat ones to do the slayer one which hasn't really had a lot the defense I've been working on defense all day and it's not really gone up so I don't understand that either uh for the thieving I'll show you what I did on my standard account real quick before we move on uh, that one is the leprechaun, I think. No, not thieving. I'm sorry, not thieving. Um, for thieving, I did get all of these for thieving. And the way I did it was on my standard account. I just let it rip on the farmer just because I have all the seeds and I figured I could use that. I'll probably do the, the regular dude here because he gives you the least amount of stuff to deal with. Um, the one I wanted to point out was the monkey. So what I did on my standard account, and this worked out fairly well, uh, I came in here to the cheapest thing I could make, which was this one right here. This should be the silver topaz ring. So you come over here to crafting, switch to rings, and it's this one. And the reason I did this is it's topaz and silver. I don't, I don't think there's much difference between silver and gold necessarily if you got a pile of both. But the topaz makes it super cheap. And because you're doing this, it has to be a ring. Like you can't choose anything but a ring or an amulet. So I figured that that's the cheapest thing I could get done. It's all the same cost. I mean, there's no difference in anything. Pretty much. So I crafted up a bunch of those. And then I came over here into crafting. I went to leather. I bought a big, about 10, 15,000 leather pieces. And I crafted leather gloves until this thing hit 99. And then I crafted leather boots until this thing got up a little bit further. Um, and I had all of my crafting uh, marks completed. So that's how I did that. It was kind of cheap to go with leather. The expensive part's the rings and everything. But then once you get to the leather, it's not that expensive. And you get a little bit of money back 
So it's not a complete loss. But let's get into the really good part. So I've been doing some volcano and you will see that I have the little pet came in. That was a nice bonus. I got that. Here's the epiphany that I had. And I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. But I'm not sure I'm going to do a very good job. If you notice, I am idling, idling the volcano right now. Uh, let's see. I got the pet out of it. I got the infernal stronghold is now unlocked because I cleared this thing a hundred times. I've cleared this thing a lot. I think we're up to 300 clears, over 300 clears. Uh, I basically got up this morning, started off and just let it rip. And I'll explain to you why and how all this worked. Uh, the other thing I would note is that I got the ancient shield and because I had all the silver and gold ingots sitting there and the cash in the bank, I was able to upgrade this thing. It cost like a million gold plus the gold bars, plus the ingots, uh, actually 2 million because I think it was a million each time. So I, I got that upgraded. And in fact, I've got another helmet and a shield, but I sold them because I, I just don't have the room for it. So I'm keeping one of each, but I did get an amulet of fury out of that whole thing. So I now have. Well, actually, I might have got a couple of them because I've got three here and one here. And you need 10 to do this upgrade. 10 of the torture, 10 of the fury, and then all of these, which I'm going to start working on those. Another story for another day. But the volcano. Let's get into this. I had some misconceptions about how combat worked in this game. If you look at these guys... They have a chance to hit of 63%. They're going to do this much damage and that's it, right? That's what I thought this whole thing revolved around. And if you look at every one of these fights that's coming up, they have a percent to hit. This is their melee damage or their ranged or their magic. This is their main attack, right? This are maybe not main, but their default attack. This is their default. This is what they're going to do. Occasionally, you'll get some that have some special attacks and... That's where things kind of got a little confusing for me. So let me pull this up here. I'm going to show Pratt. The way I interpreted this is that he is a ranged character. So, of course, you got to counter that. And he is going to hit you for 240. This is what you have to mitigate because this here, um, it doesn't say damage, how much damage it does, but... This is the number you have to mitigate. Basically, you have to have damage, enough damage reduction and defense and everything and armor and all that to not have this exceed your auto eat. So my auto eat right now is at 392. So that means that I can idle something that is 391 or less. Let me grab this farming here real fast. Um, hold that thought. So I can... I can take that much damage before I die, basically. So if something hits me for 393, I'm done. Anything higher than that. Actually, I should have pointed that out on Malx while he was there. So as long as I am under that figure, we're good. Now, the thing is, I've got the helmet, which adds a little bit more damage reduction. I've got now the shield, which adds a little bit more. Like I had, this is, well, I'm pretty much the dragon gear here and this and this here and of course the dragon shield and the dragon helmet uh they also recommended the um let's see the upgraded version of this the amulet of defense and all because it gives you damage reduction uh you're also encouraged to use the damage reduction potions basically you want your damage reduction as high as possible now this is where i had a problem if you look at Malx, you see that he's got a chance a a 30% chance to do this volley. Now this could be taken a couple of ways. I figured his default attack was the ranged for 240. Occasionally he might do a volley. Like it rolls some dice and says, all right, cool. You're, you're always going to attack. Occasionally you're going to do a volley. Let's look at Malx for a second here. This is where I had, oops, this is where I had my issues. This is his max hit. His normal attack is 569. I'm looking at that and I'm like, there's no way I have enough damage reduction for that attack right there. I don't. So I kept basing my, whether, whether I could idle this dungeon 
on that number. I'm like, there's no way I can do it. I, this thing was up around 600 at one point. And I'm like, there's just no way I can idle this dungeon because it's doing way more damage than I can absorb and I'm just going to die. So here's where I made my mistake. That doesn't even come into bearing on this monster. Other monsters may be different, but on this monster, it has no bearing. And here's why. Where I was taking it that he would have an attack. Is he up? No, he's not up. Oh, didn't want that. Where I took it that he was going to have an attack, uh, a melee attack of this, was incorrect. He has a 100% chance to hit you. I'm sorry, not hit you. He has a 100% chance to do something. 70% of that is the razor sharp claws right here. And it hits for two at 301. 30% of that is for this damage over time. If you watch this, that 301 is under my auto eat. He will never do this attack right here. This doesn't exist. He has a 100% chance of doing something. And that 100% chance is these two things right here. I totally didn't understand how that worked. I assumed there was an attack. What I never realized is if you watch him go... Like, we'll see it here when uh, Pratt comes up. You see Pratt's got this blue bar. That's this attack right here. That's his normal. This is his special. It's yellow. Obvious, right? I mean, you're probably used to seeing that. And that's the normal thing that you're used to. So, he burns off and dies. Let's see what happens with Malx. It's all yellow. He will never do a blue attack. It's all yellow. No matter what he does, it's never a blue attack. So when you're looking at these numbers, if they add up to 100%, everything that monster does is a special attack. So what I'm driving at is I was able to idle. I should have been idling this a long time ago. And I've been running it manually doing the hold enter thing. And I never needed to. So I just needed to pay attention to this part here on his special attacks and make sure that none of these were high enough to hurt me. This here has no bearing. I'm going to assume that this number comes from some combination of this, you know, these factors up here. And that's what makes that up. So, bottom line is you may be able to idle some of these things that you didn't necessarily think you could before you can. And this is probably going to go more towards these higher end dungeons than the lower tier stuff, because these are straight up. They either hit you or they don't. Um, they either have this attack or, you know, they don't really have a special attack. Some things do like the mile light place does. Um, nah, maybe a couple of these others. I don't remember the, the dragon dungeon. I think it's all straight up just damage. Like there's no special attacks or anything. This here, Pratt, He's got a 70% chance to hit you with a normal attack and a 30% chance to hit you with the volley. That's why it's so confusing because I just assumed that this was always going, this regular normal attack was always going to be in the rotation, but it boils down to how much of the percent chunk is cut up up here in the specials. And if you look at some of the other later on bosses, I, I'm not going to show them all here because we'll get to them when we get to them. But, um, some of these, like the Air God, when I think I looked at, it's got several attacks, but if you total all of them up, they're all special attacks. If you total all those up, they're 100%. So it will never do its attack here. So you have to pay attention to what the special attack is and how much that percentage totals up. I thought that was a massive thing. Uh, I've been, like I said, I've finally been letting this rip all day. I was going to work on Slayer stuff and work on my ranged, uh, get that up a few levels. Then I found this out and I'm like, hell yeah, I'm trying to get this gear. I want this gear out of this dungeon now. Um, where'd it go? Doesn't this tell me what? Ew, it doesn't. It does. Uh, so I need two more things. I need the plate legs and the plate body. So I did get the Cape of Pratt. Don't know how rare that is. Did I keep it? I think I put it on my ranged guy, didn't I? That one's kind of interesting. It says something about running naked. I was like, all right, whatever. So we'll see what. I, I just kept it because I wanted to see how what it did, basically. But I thought that was just 
an astonishing revelation. It opened up a whole lot because now I can just let it sit and idle on this all day, get geared up. And once I'm geared up here, I think I'm pretty well ready to go right into the next dungeon. I was able to do the next dungeon on my standard account, hold an enter to get through it. I may not even have to do that. Like I may be over geared for that now, or I may gear be geared up towards it now. I think I still have to go through with the press enter method. I'm not going to try it without, but, uh, this just made my life a whole lot easier. So check those things. And I would also recommend going to the wiki page. It is available down here under this. If you go to the wiki page, it shows you there's a dungeon section and there's a guide for the volcano, uh, this volcanic cave. And it tells you what gear to put on and what you need to have and what damage reduction you have to have um, or what amount of hit points you have to have and the damage reduction you need to do this. And like I said, just follow that and make sure you're there and kind of ignore this offensive stat for that boss because it doesn't really matter. It makes zero difference. Um, so I'm, I'm totally ecstatic. Uh, you know what? We've got some more chests here. Let's kick these things open and see what we got. Another Amulet of Fury. That's cool. Get rid of this garbage here and we're good. So, uh, you also noticed the video is out a little bit earlier. I won't have one, my Wednesday video. It's going to be a Tuesday video, so I won't have one tomorrow. I will be back with Sunday's video. Uh, I'm going to be out for a little bit, so I don't know how much I'm going to get done. But I'm going to hope to continue on with something. Probably do some summoning and stuff like that that I can just let rip during the day and not care about. In fact, that might be what I do tonight, set up things for tomorrow because I got a little drive ahead of me tomorrow. But uh, that is it. That's all I got. I hope that was helpful and I hope that makes sense. Um, and take care. We will catch you on the next one.